In this day and age, you may be aware of this thing called the LGBTQIA plus community, or LGBT for short. However, you, like many others, might not know what it means or what the different demographics it includes represent. I feel that more people need to be educated on this, as it's an important issue that affects a lot of people. Chances are that even if you yourself are not part of this group, you will have met someone who is. As a guy who was born a guy and has never been any romantic relationships of any kind, I can only explain so much, but I've tried my best to do some research into this topic and get some advice from others more educated on these matters. So, hopefully I can give at the very least a basic explanation of all the people who make up this demographic and how not to be a terrible person around them. So, without any further ado, what is LGBT anyway? Now, most people, such as me, are heterosexual. This means that we're attracted to people of the opposite sex or gender to us, such as a guy who likes girls or a girl who likes guys. However, some people are attracted to people of the same sex or gender, and thus known as homosexual. Male identifying people who are same sex attracted are referred to as gay, whilst female identifying people who are same sex attracted are referred to as lesbian. Some people are bisexual. This means they're attracted to more than one gender of people. This could be attraction to both men and women, or to people of non-binary gender, which we will touch on later in this video. These people unfortunately see much harassment from both the straight and the non-straight, as they are sometimes perceived as lying about being attracted to both sexes. This is wrong. Bisexuality is very real, and it's valid as any other sexuality. In recent times, it has slowly drifted more towards the definition of pansexuality, which is attraction to people of any gender, regardless of how they express it. As we will establish later, there are many more than two genders that a person can have. Often people who aren't transgender struggle to imagine what it feels like to be someone who is, so here's a nice analogy that helps people understand. It's like for the longest time wearing a pair of shoes that you thought fit you, but then you try on a new pair that fits better and then you realise how uncomfortable the old shoes were. That's how being trans is. These people spent a long time thinking they were okay as one gender, but then they realised that another gender was a much better fit. The feeling of discomfort towards one's gender identity is known as gender dysphoria. Now, these people choose to express their gender in a variety of different ways. They might dress like the gender they prefer, act in the way people of that gender traditionally act, and some even get surgery and medication to alter their sexual characteristics to match those of their preferred gender. Of course, none of these steps are mandatory. A trans woman could get surgery but still dress in a more masculine way, or a trans man might present masculine but not get surgery at all. One common misconception is that a person of any age, even a child, can walk into a hospital and get a sex change operation, but this is false. In most territories, one must be over 16 to undergo procedures or drug courses that permanently alter biology, such as hormones, but the ones that are offered to children, such as puberty blockers, are all non-permanent and their effects will be reversed by simply not taking them. The thing is, it requires a lot of courage to come out and openly be trans, so if they say they are trans, they're probably serious about it. Some people may detransition, however the reason, unfortunately, is often because they didn't receive the social support they needed and not because they realised they weren't trans. Some people wildly inflate the rate that people detransition in order to discredit transgender and gender non-conforming people as merely suffering from something else, but reptile studies show that only about 8% of trans people actually do detransition, of which only 5% within that did so because they found transitioning was not for them. And also, if you know someone who is trans, don't go up to them and ask what body parts they have. It's a really personal question they should be allowed to answer when they want to, and not when you ask them. How would you feel if someone came up to you and started asking what was going on down there? Don't do it, people. It's really rude. Some people choose to not ascribe to either of the two standard genders of male and female. They might present themselves somewhere in between the two in terms of masculinity and femininity, they might be completely agender and not present in a way that sways towards either, or they may measure themselves on a scale completely different to male and female. Some people say that non-binary genders have only appeared because of the internet, but in fact, identities outside the traditional binary have existed in a number of cultures around the world for thousands of years. These people tend to not use the standard he, him, she, her pronouns, and often they might have their own that they use, so if you don't know what they are, refer to them by they, them pronouns until you get around to asking them. Some will say that they, as a singular pronoun, is not grammatically correct, but this is wrong, and people often use it in their daily vocabulary without realising it. Even if you aren't swayed in your beliefs, it takes minimal effort to respect someone's pronouns, and it can mean the world to them when you do, so don't spend your time trying to be an armchair linguist because it just makes you come across as a pedantic jerk.
Due to certain hormonal or chromosomal abnormalities, some people are born or grow up with sexual characteristics that pertain to both male and female sexes, or sometimes neither. These people may seek surgery to change their sex characteristics to match one particular gender, or they might choose to assume a non-binary identity such as being gender fluid. In the past, insects people had parts of them hacked off at birth to make them fit into one gender, sometimes without even their parents being informed, and of course with no consent from the child themselves. This has a tendency to be a bad idea as more often than not the surgeon will choose the wrong parts to keep which results in the child experiencing gender dysphoria which they wouldn't have had, at least to the same degree, if they had been left with both sets of sexual characteristics. As such, it's a smart call to not give your child surgery if they're born intersex and make sure that they don't try to do it behind your back either. One other thing to bear in mind is that there are a wide variety of insect conditions and they can all manifest in wildly different ways in every case. You can't just look at a person and know they're insects, so the best thing you can do if you aren't sure of a person's gender is use they them pronouns until you find a polite time to ask them what ones they prefer. Let's just briefly move back to sexuality, or more precisely the lack thereof. Some people are asexual, which means they don't experience sexual attraction, and some are aromantic, which means they don't experience romantic attraction. These two sometimes intersect, which means they don't experience any romantic or sexual attraction to anyone. However, just because someone might say they're aromantic or asexual doesn't necessarily mean they don't experience this at all. There are a broad range of what are known as grey asexualities which exist somewhere else on the romantic spectrum, like demi-romantic or demisexual people who might only be romantically or sexually attracted to people they've already gotten to know really well as friends or acquaintances, or it could just be that the person experiences attraction in smaller amounts than normal. There are many more than that that exist, but those are the ones that are most common. There are a lot of different genders and sexualities, far more than I could detail in just this one little video. I wanted to make this easy to digest for people who just want to learn about these things, be it children or adults. But what I want you to all take away from this is that, no matter what they might be, gay, bi, trans, ace, NB, they are all equally as valid. Just because they might not fit our society's traditional definitions of normal doesn't make them any less than the rest of us. In the end, they are all people as we are. They just want to live their lives happily as themselves, and we shouldn't judge them for that. We shouldn't mindlessly hate the things that we do not understand, because that will only mean that we never learn and grow as a society. And hopefully this video has helped you understand a little bit more. And with that, I hope you have a good day, goodbye to you all. Before this video ends, I just want to give some advice on some easy ways to be a kind and respectful person to people under the LGBT umbrella that will hopefully come in handy at some point. First of all, if you don't know what pronouns someone uses, use they them until you get a chance to ask them in person. It's not that hard to do and it's much more inclusive than saying he slash she. Second, don't say things like, I'm okay with the gay people as long as they're not doing it anywhere near me, as what that's insinuating is that you think they shouldn't be out in public as themselves. You see heterosexual couples kissing on park benches all the time, so what's the difference if they're of the same gender? This is the sort of attitude that perpetuates homophobic sentiments and makes this world an incredibly unpleasant and hostile place to be. And finally, if someone says that this is all a fad, and all the gay and trans people will disappear in a few years, then remind them that these people have existed since practically the dawn of time. The only reason that you see more of them is that society isn't actively trying to murder them just for existing anymore. So with that in mind, go out after watching this video and try to be the best person you can be. This video was made by me with the help of my friend Will and his sibling Sophie, and with that, I hope you learnt something, and goodbye.